Well, hello, this is Adam and welcome back to Rare Classic Cars. Today we're going to tell you about a cool invention that I believe Oldsmobile really came up with. And what is that? Well, something that is going to protect your car and its value over time. And that is these plastic inner fender liners that you see here. These are plastic. By the way, it's an Oldsmobile weekend here, I suppose. There's my 67 Oldsmobile Delta 88 Holiday Hardtop Coupe and a 66 Tornado. But neither of those have the plastic inner fender liners. I believe that Oldsmobile introduced the plastic inner fender liner in 1967 and you could see it in red. There actually were red plastic inner fender liners on the 1967 Oldsmobile 442 W30s, just on the W30s. But there were other Oldsmobiles that had black plastic inner fender liners, I believe at some point in that model you're going for. And then Oldsmobile really started proliferating these plastic inner fender liners across the lineup as the years would go on to the point that the full-size cars would have them, the intermediates, the A-bodies would have them. And it was really a great idea because this is where all of the salt and the road debris gets kicked up. And this is a very thick gauge, durable plastic. I have never seen one of these break or have an issue. And eventually GM would proliferate this on other full-size cars too. But Oldsmobile division was really the first to have it. And you can get a sense there of the gauge of how thick this was. Now the 67 442 W40 didn't have the plastic inner fender liners for rust or corrosion protection, really had them because of, well, they were lighter weight than the metal fender liners. And why they went with red on that 67 442 W30, I don't know. I think there were other GM cars that had that, the uh, Riviera Silver Arrow concept, the 53, 54 Buick Skylark, I believe, concept, and back in the glory days of automobile and coach building, there were sometimes different fender liner covers to accentuate the overall styling of the car. But by this point, it was really about light weighting and corrosion protection. And I suspect that these were even cheaper. So it was a benefit all the way around. Cheaper, better corrosion protection, and lightweight. So why not do it? By this point, these cars still had some corrosion issues, and I would say the A-bodies, they didn't seem to hold up as well as the full-size cars when it came to corrosion protection. But they are fun cars to drive. They drive really, really well. Don't really seem to have any major issues. Of course, this that I just talked about, this inner fender liner in it being plastic, just applies to the front, interestingly. The back is still all metal here. This is metal. And of course, this is metal. This is not plastic. So you only got plastic inner fender liners on the front half of your car. So where all this is kicking up the road salt and everything, and often this car only has 6,000 miles, but often it would just basically sit in this little pocket here and then corrode. And then you'd get the corrosion on the back side, or I should say the front side, because all that road salt would sit right in here. This car doesn't have that. You can see the flange is really crisp still because there's no corrosion on either side. So sometimes you'd see these cars with the back end being perforated and well ventilated, if you will. That was the optional flow through ventilation system that you got as you continued to drive your car was that the car just kind of rotted away. Here's another look at this one. And again, obviously, the other side is also metal. I don't know of any plastic rear wheel fender liners that were put, at least in General Motors cars, put in the comments section if you can think of any that were put on any car. I'm struggling to think of any that were. The auto companies were starting to think of corrosion protection during this time. It just wasn't all that great in terms of the technology and left a bit to be desired. And while we're looking under hood, 
This Oldsmobile, as you can tell, has the 350 cubic inch engine. It was a standard four barrel carburetor, interestingly, in 1973, so it made 180 horsepower stock. I've added factory style dual exhaust to this, so it probably adds about 20 horsepower, I would guess. So it's probably pushing around 200 horsepower, maybe a little more than that. Actually has some good top end, amazingly, on this 350. Very pleasant vehicle to drive. Of course, you have the typical GM A6 air conditioning compressor for the frigid air. I've put the uh, new master cylinder on. Bowles also did this bracing here to really help with the structural rigidity of the car. And these A bodies, I will say, do feel solid aside from the door closures that leave a bit to be desired. You know, this is the, if you did this in a Ford, it would just sound great. But here, GM, you close the door. It just doesn't have the same quality sound as on a Ford. And this also has, you can see there, the spring-loaded grill. Pretty cool. For collision purposes, 73 was the first year of that five mile an hour bumper in the front. 74, it would be five miles an hour in the front and in the rear as well. In any case, hope you enjoyed this spotlight on a cool, innovative feature that I believe, like I said, was developed by Oldsmobile. Feel free to put in the comments section if you can think of another auto company that had it before Oldsmobile in 1967. And there are a few other GM cars with red fender liners that I'm forgetting aside from that W3442 as well as the Buick Skylark and the concept car, the uh, 63, well I should say not the 63, but the first generation Riviera Silver Arrow came up before 63. Oh, and the Pontiac Phantom, or just the General Motors Phantom, depending on how you want to call it. Bill Mitchell, the design VP's last concept car, kind of a farewell to himself that he wanted to take home, but I think his boss, Howard Carroll, said, no way are you taking this car home. And as a consequence, the Phantom wasn't drivable. It was just a roller in terms of a concept, didn't really even have a full interior, but, his desire was to build it for himself and take it home as a retirement gift. Can you imagine the gall of that? Using company money for your retirement gift and probably millions of dollars. But this was the 70s and Bill Mitchell styled a lot of these cars. or was in charge of GM design when many of these cars were built. And they were significant sales successes. So there you have it, a significant design from the rocket division, Oldsmobile. And let's take a look at the 67 Oldsmobile 442 W30 and its red inner fender liners, red plastic, I should say. There you can see it on the outside. This is a red car, so it doesn't stand out as much. But you can also see there the inner fender liners that are indeed red plastic. Imagine that on a contrasting color car, that would be quite the sight. I may end up putting this 6,000 mile 73 Cutlass S for sale on eBay at some point in the near future. I just have so many vehicles. I've owned this car for about 10 years. Probably time to thin the herd a little bit and turn it over. It's a great car, runs great, drives great. I drive it anywhere, newer tires, newer dual exhausts. And well, we'll see what I end up doing.